a warm welcome to everybody. Uh, we are from my master's and um, yeah, we're here. We had an information platform for all arriving students where we gather all the information you might need when coming to this beautiful city. And uh, I think students can tell you best uh, what you need to know. And that's why Amanda and Fran will guide you through the presentation today. My name is Thomas. I'm working for the Student Service Center um, for the university. Um, and with us today is also Frederike from the International Student Help Desk, where you can turn to for like um, offline questions or in detail questions when you, for example, have problems with an application or get a Dutch letter. We will get back to that later in the presentation as well. And with that being said, I give the word to you guys. Um, okay, I'll go first. So hi everyone, good morning. My name is Fran, um, I'm with my Maastricht. I'm the content coordinator, so I write for the website. I'm 21 years old, almost 22. I'm currently uh, starting my third year of my bachelor's in European law school in Maastricht. Um, did I mention, I'm from Argentina, but I grew up in Dubai and yeah, that's pretty much me. I've been with my Maastricht for a year now. So it's really great that all of you are here and that everyone's really active on the chat and we hope that we can give you guys a good and fun and useful presentation. Yeah, and I am Amanda, I'm 25, I'm the promotions coordinator. So mainly social media stuff, that'll be me. If you're talking to me on WhatsApp, that'll also be me. I'm also a student at Maastricht. I did my bachelor in TKE and then I loved Maastricht so much, I decided to stay and do my masters. So clearly I love it here. Also international, I'm half Irish, half Zimbabwean. And I've been with Maastricht for almost over two years now. So yeah, I really love it. And I hope you enjoy the presentation and the information that we give you. So. All right. Um, so a little bit about this webinar, we're looking at around 45 to 60 minutes of the presentation, also including things like answering questions. It will be recorded and available on Facebook and YouTube at some time later this week, or maybe the week after, I'm not sure. Um, there will be also other webinars. We already had this question. They will all be the same content. Um, you can ask your questions through the Q&A function. Try to do the Q&A function and not the chat. It will make it easier for Thomas and Frederica who are, will be answering the questions either in writing or they will like say them to us if they are considered generally interesting for everyone. Um, we ask that you um, post more general questions. We don't cover info about your university, your faculty, or even too much COVID info. Just maybe if you are interested in how it is to live with COVID and Maastricht or things like this, sure, but nothing too specific about regulations. Yeah, and what we will cover mainly are the adulting things that you need to do once you move to a new country. So health insurance, registering with the municipality if you haven't done so already, something called the DigiID, which we'll explain later. And then other things that are important that you may not realize, such as your recycling, getting a bike, transport, getting around Maastricht. So we'll lead you through everything bit by bit. You can ask your questions for each one as we go. Um, and if something else is not here, you can also ask. Cool. So we, just a little, oh, sorry. Uh, we also got a question, uh, but please try to ask them in the Q&A function if this is also interesting for Dutch people. Um, I think it is. We have a lot of information uh, and info just about the city Maastricht, but of course, as a Dutch person, you are more familiar with the um, rights and obligation here in the city. So maybe uh, you don't learn as much as an international student might, but I hope you will still get value from the presentation. Cool. Um, so Thomas sort of mentioned what my master is, but still we'll give a little bit more information. We're a website, a platform to help new students such as yourselves um, settle and find your feet in the city. So this can be by providing information on anything from finding the best drinks in town, applying for Dutch subsidies, and also other topics that Amanda mentioned in the slide before. Um, the website, the project was created by students for students is supported by Master's University, Zoid University of Applied Sciences, and the Gemeente, which is the municipality of the city. So yeah, we're here for you guys. It's nonprofit. We're just here to help everyone as much as possible. 
So in case you haven't already checked us out prior to this presentation, this is our website homepage. Um, as you can see here, we have like these eight little points. I keep forgetting if it's points or dials, but I'm gonna go with points today. And they sort of encompass everything that we talk about. So from health to finances, to transport, but also stuff like getting settled. We have a city map. It's a little red pointy thing there. Um, you can find things that'll help you explore Maastricht a lot more. So you really will find a lot of topics within each one. In finances, for example, I'll find a topic on just banking. I'll find something on subsidies. Um, so really check it out. The stuff we talk about in this presentation is literally the tip of the iceberg of the things that we have on our website. Oh, <laughs> um, sorry, the sharing screen thing is a little bit. Anyways, um, so diving in right away, the first thing we're going to cover is health insurance. So many of you will already probably be here. And if you haven't done so, please, please check that your current health insurance covers you and any possible health care expenses that you might have in the Netherlands. So this will really depend on your personal situation. You will just have to check with your current provider um, whether what you already have is good enough for here. Um, if you're from an EU country, your European health insurance card should be enough to cover you at least on a basic level during your time in Maastricht. Some exceptions will apply, of course, if you have extra needs, um, you will definitely have to look into that. Um, we hope that you already have this in mind if you do have extra healthcare needs. Um, and otherwise, if your current health insurance does not cover you here, then you will have to look into maybe uh, Dutch private health insurance options. All of this information is on the website under health and health insurance. We even have some useful links for um, pages that can compare different providers and you can look at all the different coverage options that you have here. If you are planning to get a job or a paid internship for which you get paid at least the Dutch minimum wage per hour, you will be obliged to take out Dutch public health insurance. So there's a difference between public and private health insurance. If you get a job, you can take out public health insurance. If you don't have a job or a paid internship, then you are not allowed legally to take out public. You'll have to take out private health insurance. So it can be a little bit confusing. It's a lot easier when you read it. Again, everything is on the website. Um, and the Dutch minimum wage you can find on the government website. You can just search up Dutch hourly minimum wage and it will vary according to your age. So definitely check that out if you are getting a job or an internship. Um, health insurance is also a really important topic because at some point during the year, you will be receiving letters from this organization called the CAK. So the CAK is in charge of basically checking that you are insured according to Dutch law. So you will get this letter. Some of you will get it, some of you might not. Um, it's kind of a random process, I believe. Um, and you will have to declare your status to them. So if you are not required to take out Dutch health insurance, you'll have to show this. If you already, if you are required and you do have Dutch health insurance, you will have to show this as well. So Amanda, who manages our social media, she will send out reminders at the appropriate time of the year. So it might be a good idea to follow us on Instagram because she puts these little tips up. Mm, if you don't um, send the letter back, basically, you, you will incur a fine. So it's a good idea to keep an eye out for this logo that you see at the bottom left for the CAK. And um, yeah, obviously, if you have any further questions on the website, is a lot of information, or you can also email us or contact us at some point during the year. I hope I covered everything. Um, any questions, Thomas, or should we move on? Um, somebody just asked if uh, they have to pay for Dutch public health insurance. Maybe you can just briefly say something about it. Yeah, so you do have to pay for Dutch public health insurance, but there is a health insurance subsidy called Zorktislag, which, again, you can find under our finances section on the website. Super easy to apply and to get. Um, we will cover a few of the steps that you actually need to do to apply for subsidies later on in the presentation, so don't worry. Um, but Zork to Slide usually covers basically all of public health insurance. If you get a basic plan, then you will be completely or almost completely covered by Zork to Slide. So yeah. you are paying for it, but then you are not, technically. Okay, quickly, um, just a reminder for the ones who came a little bit later, um, we are having these three webinars. They all cover the same information. We will also record one or two and put them later online on YouTube and on Facebook. And um, 
what else I want to say, please use the Q&A function on the bottom that will make it for us way easier uh, to answer your question and please don't put them in the chat. Thanks. All right, yes, so let's move on. Or Amanda, did you want to say something? No, I think we covered it well in depth for now. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, we'll talk about a little hot topic that is still current, I think, right now. So we hope a lot of you have your housing sorted out. Most of you, I would hope, of the, oh, wow, 657 people we have. If you haven't, then we recommend you check out Maastricht Housing. Um, this is the official housing platform for UM and Zoid. Um, there are other options as well, such as short-term solution, which I'll get into the, just now, but we also have on our website a section called Room Search, and we list other options and ways to find housing. So if one way we're using it and working, there's a few more options to explore. For now, if you're here, then short-term solution will be the student hotel or stay okay. Stay okay is like our very own hostel, it's much cheaper than I would say student hotel. You could also try Airbnbs, um, make a friend, share the price for the new Airbnb, but do not fret. A few more houses can come become available in September, mid-October. So all hope is not lost. Um, if you have housing and now you've got your contract, everything sorted. Now, if you have any issues with your contract, landlord, housemate, then we would like to introduce you to the HER team, Zoid Limburg. Um, they are funded by the university, so they're really for you and they're here to help you with any legal advice or to check out your contract just to make sure that, you know, everything is all right, especially if this is your first contract, like moving to a new city, first time renting out a house. They're really important to have a look at. You can check out the frequently asked questions page on their website. It's just search their name, you'll find it. Um, and you can maybe see already from the FAQs some of the things you might be wondering about. Um, and then if we go to the next slide, unless Thomas, you have questions. Yeah, maybe we can pick one up about <laughs> health insurance because we just talked about it. That, that was, <laughs> do I need health insurance if I have a zero hour contract? And you guys should know that. Yes, you do indeed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. As long as you get the Dutch minimum wage for any work that you're doing, even if it's an internship, a zero hour contract, you have to get Dutch public health insurance. Yes. And the second one is if non-EU international students also can get the subsidy. Yes. Yes. If you live in I've the Netherlands, you have a job here, you can apply for Zork to Slide. Yes. On the website, there's even a step-by-step -step guide to apply for the subsidy. Um, so everything should be very straightforward for you. And again, you can always email us if you do have any questions. But it's a relatively easy subsidy to get, even if you're non-European. That's one of the better, like the one, one of the good ones that you can actually get as a non-EU student. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so if those are the questions, then we can move on or? Um, one more quick one. Um, where was it again? Okay, let's just move on. I think maybe it's already answered by uh, Patricia. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next big thing is registering with the municipality. So if you are staying in Maastricht for four months or more, then you are legally required to register your address at the municipality. Um, this is super, super important because it's, it's the way that, this is going to sound a little wrong maybe, but it's a way that the government can sort of link your identity with any subsidies that you will apply for and all these things. Um, registering will also give you your BSN. We'll cover the BSN a little bit in the next slide as well, but it's basically your Dutch social security number in a way. It's again, super, super important for applying for subsidies, for getting things like your DGD, for um, taking out health insurance. Um, registration is super, super easy now with COVID and everything, you can do so online. You should either scan the QR code that we have there or search up Student Registration Maastricht. There are two separate registering websites on the municipality website. One of them is dedicated for students. So if you are a student, definitely make sure you're on the right one. Um, you will fill out a form online and then the municipality will give you, um, what's it called, an appointment, sorry. 
I'll give you an appointment <laughs> that you'll have to go to in person and you'll have to provide certain relevant legal documents. Um, I think it's a birth certificate and some other things. All the requirements are on the municipality website. You can also find more information on our website. But definitely make sure that before you go to this appointment, you check all the legalization and the translation requirements. Again, they can be found on the municipality website because if you show up with untranslated documents, they won't be able to take them and then you will have to reschedule the appointment, you won't get your BSN on time, and this will delay a lot of different processes that you have to go through. So really, really important that you register if you are staying for more than four months. Um, and yeah, just get it done as quickly as possible and save yourself a lot of trouble. Yeah, maybe and with can, that, maybe go we ahead. Can also, um, pose some questions about this topic. Um, I just clicked on it. So somebody asked if I registered with the municipality on the site more than a month ago and they only sent me the confirmation that they received the form and nothing else. What can I do? Because it's a no reply email address and they're not sure that they can register a second time. Mm, I would call them or find an email address or even email us and then we can maybe find an email address for you. But definitely if you're in Maastricht, go to them personally, take out an appointment on the website and just go to them for general information and then find out what happened. Um, because I think this time of year is also really busy for them with so many new students coming in. And so they have a million applications and a lot of things to go through. So it might just be that your application got lost in the deluge of them that there are at the time. So either find a phone number if you can and call them, or if you're already a master, go in person and see what's happening. Mm -hmm. And if these means don't work, then maybe email us and we can help you out a little bit as well. Exactly. Um, but I don't know why that would be the case, honestly. It worked fine, I think, for most people that I've spoken to. It's pretty streamlined. And because they have so many requests at the moment, it can last a little bit longer until they get back to you. But usually they always, uh, they, they will come back to you. And if it's really like a month, then you definitely should send an email or try to call them uh, if something went wrong. But I think mm -hmm. within uh, two weeks, she should hear back from them. Yeah, now is definitely like the busiest time for this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just to answer this one question, you have to register in the city where your address is. So if you live in Maastricht, then you register in Maastricht municipality. If you're living outside, like in Herland, for example, then you have to register there. Yeah, and if you live in Belgium, you don't register, <laughs> just to make this clear. Um, you have to have yeah. an address in Maastricht. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of subsidy questions, so I'll just go to the next slide and maybe help you out there. Um, so I'll start by talking about the DigiD. So once you've got your registration done, you get a BSN number, as Fran just um, explained to you, and the BSN number you can then apply for a DigiD. It's always very strange to kind of describe what a DigiD is, but it's basically like your login details that's linked to your BSN. So it's linked to all your information, and that login detail you can use online to deal with certain things. So for example, instead of always having to deal with your taxes via letter, filling out a form, sending this letter out, waiting for the letter to come back, maybe not getting the letter back, DigiID solves that. It's like your online pl platform login, you go online to whatever website it would be. Um, I'll just continue with the taxes example. So my taxes, you log in with your DGID um, username and password. And this, since it's linked to your BSN, they have all your details in one spot. Um, so this we always recommend you to get because it really helps you with everything else, such as subsidies. So someone asked about there being a housing subsidy. It's called Hertuslag as Anna Lovely. And I said, thank you very much. Um, so you can then apply for Hertz's lab with your DigiID. It's so much quicker to do it online as opposed to having to do it via letters. Um, so we also mentioned all the subsidies that we have in our finances section. You can go check them out. We have a housing subsidy, health insurance subsidy. Um, we have a study finance subsidy. It all depends. They all have different requirements. Um, so really check out if you, um, are eligible for each one. So to slug most likely to get if you're working here. Um, the rest have different criteria that you have to fulfill. So you can check it out there. Um, in line with this as well, um, if you want to check out the DigiID how to apply, once you have your BSN, you can check it out. Visit 
on our website, finances, banking, it's over there. And trust me, it makes life so much easier. It takes a bit to get like two weeks or so, but worth it, I think. Yeah, it, it really does streamline so many procedures I would all, you would otherwise have to go through with letters and things like this. So it's just an app that you download on your phone and it lets you log in basically anywhere. It's really secure as well. Your information is stored very, very securely with concerns for privacy and all these things handled. So no worries about that as well. Definitely get your DigiD guys. It will make your life so much easier. Um, okay, recycling and trash disposal. So I think for a lot of people, I don't know where you guys are coming from, but for me, I moved here from Dubai and before that from Argentina. So recycling and trash disposal are not really too complex in these countries. And in the Netherlands, it is. So it can take a little bit of time to get used to it and to learn where everything goes. But we have a great section on the website describing everything. Um, and we're just going to give you a little overview here. It's a really complex topic for a lot of people. For me, it definitely was. So um, we don't expect you to remember everything we tell you. We'll just give a brief overview of everything. And then you can check it out on the website as well if you're still interested or you forgot something or you want to learn more. So the garbage system in the Netherlands is basically geared towards encouraging recycling as much as possible and discouraging non-recyclable waste as much as possible. So this is obviously great for the environment, but it's also really good for you to know how it works because it will help you avoid fines and also save money. Um, so the first step that you should do uh, when you embark upon your recycling and trash disposal journey is download the Milieu app. So this app is super important. Um, it, the first thing that it, it's just a really basic app in the sense that it provides information super, super clearly and it gets you what you need without too much fuzz. So it will give you a calendar that will tell you when trash will be picked up in your neighborhood. So in most neighborhoods, this happens once a week in the mornings and you have to put out your trash the night before. This is also something that you have to follow pretty strictly because if you lay out your trash um, on a random day of the week and trash is trash uh, oh my god trash pickup is not the next day then you can get a fine they have been known to track down people to rummage through their trash find a letter with their name and then like send you a fine because you put out your trash two days before you were supposed to so the trash, trash police the trash police <laughs> so trash pickup does happen once a week you can check the milieu app to see when this is you put in your neighborhood your address whatever and then it tells you but then it also gives a list of basically every single product that you can imagine and how you're supposed to dispose of it. So definitely a great resource just for general recycling information. With the app, you can also order one of these green bins that you use for your organic and bio waste disposal. Um, so if yours gets lost, broken, stolen, or whatever, or you just don't have one for whatever reason, then you can order one through the Milieu app. And through the app, you can also request a uh, Milieu Pass, which is a little green card that you either use to access the Milieu Parks, which are massive waste disposal parks that you can take your big pieces of trash to, or some neighborhoods will have special bins that you have to access also with the Milieu Pass. So again, I know this is so much information. I will repeat, everything is on the website. We're also shortly coming out with a, with a comprehensive guide on everything about trash disposal. So that will be coming out soon. We're just waiting for the final little adjustments by the municipality itself. Um, the next thing you need to know is about these little black bins at the bottom, large photo. Those are the milieu perons. So they're littered around the city. They're just spread out in strategic points, let's say, for you to actually take your recycling to them. So what most people will do is separate their trash into paper and PMD. And then obviously bio waste, but bio waste you dispose of at home. You get these green bins, you put all your things in little green bags or just directly into the bin. You leave your bin out on a day of the week, which is also um, in the Milieu app. You can find out when bio waste is being picked up by the municipality. And then you leave it out there, your bin gets put back in the same place, you take it back in, the process starts again. For anything that is recyclable waste, but is not bio waste, so that's your paper and your PMD, your plastic, metal, and drink cartons, like from juice, those you have to actually take to the milliperons, these black bins at the bottom photo. So usually what most people do is they'll take 
two big bags. In one, they'll put all their paper. In the other one, they'll put all their PMD, their plastic metal drink cartons. And then you just, whenever they're full or whenever you feel like it, or if you are like me and you just postpone it as much as possible so they're overflowing, you just take them to the Millie Perons, separate your trash, and then start the process again. So these are the two main types of recycling that you will do in Maastricht. And then everything that cannot be recycled goes into these red bags that you see at the top right photo. Um, these bags are basically just for anything that cannot be recycled for um, your residual waste. You can get them at the service counters of any of the big supermarkets. The service counters are where you usually get cigarettes or tobacco. And they come in two sizes, a small one and a big one. I would say that if you're a single person living alone and you are doing your recycling the way you're supposed to do it, then you should get a small one. And they come in like packets of 12 and I think you pay around a euro 30, a euro 70 or something like this per bag. So for a plastic bag, it's quite expensive. And so that's part of the reason that they encourage recycling so that you can save some money on these. Um, another reason is that if, for example, you put glass into them and then you know, the municipality is picking up your trash and then they hear like little glass bottles clicking, clinking in there, then the trash police will come after you. So just avoid a fine, do as much recycling as you can and uh, avoid using the red bags as much as possible. And that was a lot of talking. I hope that was clear. <laughs> All the information again is on the website, but if there are any questions, feel free to ask. Um, yeah. Maybe we also will jump in with a couple of questions already. Thanks a lot. It's really a lot, but we also never had as many um, participants in our webinars as today. So I hope you excuse us that we are not as quick uh, with answering all the questions because Patrika and me are doing what we can. Um, one uh, really good comment was that the app is not called Milieu app, <laughs> how you would try to read it out, but there's an I missing behind the L. Um, so it's Milieu. Um, app to oh, sorry, yeah. but that's okay, it's no problem. Um, and then there were a lot of questions about registering. If you don't live in Maastricht, you of course also don't need to register in Maastricht. Then you need to register in the municipality where you're living. So be it in Belgium or be it in Eisemarkrate or be it in Kerkrade or, or Helene. Then you uh, should Google or online search for um, register uh, registering or register uh, with this municipality. Um, if you have problems with that, you can also send us a message about it and we can look for you um, where to do that. But we have only special information on it on how to do it in Maastricht. Um, when you move within Maastricht and you're already registered here, you can also change it very easily. We have also information on that on our website. Um, do you guys see some questions on the on the q a that you want to answer live there are so many were so uh yeah good. um just that uh i think we have a few exchange students as well um once you leave your exchange you have to deregister it's really important that you deregister otherwise you might get like letters that are sent to you because they think you live here these could be fines and they just accumulate through time um so you really need to deregister information is on our website as well mm -hmm. The uh, Milieu app is for free indeed, and um, also the bio waste and everything you can, after you reg register with the municipality and your household doesn't have one of these green bins already, you can request it via the app, but it's all for free. Mm -hmm. And in the uh -huh. app, you can order the cream bin, I think, when you open it on the left side, um, but send us a message if you really don't find it. Um, Okay. okay, I think we'll move on now. Move on, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> the eye's still there. I did a little annotation. <laughs> um, another really important thing, it's kind of tied into what I already mentioned with deregistering, um, which is legal documents, letters, and then overall help, which is another side I'll get into now. Um, I know we've all moved to the Netherlands and they speak English here, but it's really important to note that you will get letters in Dutch and do not ignore them. A lot of people just see something, they're like, oh, if it was important, they'd send it to me in English. I was the same. It's not like that. You might get a really important letter. And you'll see a number there. That number is probably maybe going to be a fine and it can be avoided if you respond immediately. 
So do not ignore these letters. Trust me, I have a housemate that's had like 400 euros fine because she just ignored it. Um, here to help you is the International Student Help Desk. Uh, Frederica is here, um, as you can see. You can contact them. Their information is at the bottom. They will help you with translations and with legal documents. You can also use Google Translate. And Fran has a really good one that she uses. I forget the name. Um, Deepel, right on the yes, chat. Yes, exactly. Um, that's also a really good website um, app to use to translate. Uh, or go to the student international student help desk. They're really friendly. They can also explain maybe what this is. If it's a fine, for example, what it is for. Um, so if you want for that regards, you can contact them. Um, for overall help to do with your studies, I would go to the Student Services Center. Uh, their information is there. Study and Master at University of Pantanal. They'll help you with like your, I think I saw a question there about what is mandatory, blah, 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 that sort of thing. So things to do with the with the university, your studies, that you need to go to um, uh, the SSE for. Um, yeah, there's just a difference between what we help you with, which is the general like life and like settling in. But when it comes to the university, how it's run, your timetables, your registration with university courses, ETC, if you're from Maastricht University, which you guys all are, then you need to go to the SSE for that. Cool. Um, any questions or do we move on? A lot of questions, but I think uh, we will try to answer, um, depending how much time we have at the end, but we still have quite some time, a lot at the end and go through them and see which one are important. Um, so for now, I would suggest we move on. Okay. Um, okay, well-being. This is a huge topic, as you can see from the amount of information on the slide. Um, so we'll go through them one by one. First of all, the GGD, so Zoid Lindbergh, Zoid Lindbergh, I never know how to pronounce that. This is a local health authority. So really important contact for you to have. So they do things from administering vaccines, they provide COVID tests, and they even provide STD checks. So they're super, super nice over there. Of course, if you wanna get your vaccine here in the Netherlands, as soon as you are a resident, you are able to do so. I believe that it's a fairly easy process as well, and it's free. COVID tests are only free if you display symptoms, otherwise you will have to pay for a PCR. Um, SCD checks are free if you are under 25, I believe. So you can just go on their website and see all their services. They have a lot of information in English as well. And they're just really, really nice people. So definitely keep them in mind if you need any of these services and more. Um, next is cannabis and drug regulation. So these are, for very obvious reasons, hot topics in the Netherlands. Um, it's just really, really important that you guys know what is legal and what isn't. So there is a huge misconception that weed is actually legal in the Netherlands. That is not true. It's merely decriminalized. So the Dutch adopt a, a tolerance policy towards it, which means that you can still actually technically get in trouble for weed possession or if you get caught with enough to, I don't know, for there to be suspicion of you distributing or things like this. So if there is a misconception about something as common as weed in the Netherlands, then imagine for everything else. So if you were not encouraging or discouraging, we're just saying if you are planning to consume or use drugs, make sure that you research what you're doing and what is legal and what isn't. So coffee shops are freely available to residents of the Netherlands. You will have to present certain documents in order to enter and you will only be able, you will only be able to buy a certain amount at a time. All of it is quite regulated. When it comes to hard drugs, the tolerance policy disappears. So you do really have to be careful. We will be coming out with content shortly about exactly what the distinction between decriminalization and legalization is, um, what things are allowed, what things aren't, and what how the regulations stand. Because also at the moment, things are changing a little bit in Amsterdam. There are new, uh, there's new legislation coming into place, especially with issues like drug tourism and things like this. So at the moment, we do have some information under health and well-being, so definitely check that out as well. But always do your own research and make sure that what you're doing is allowed. Um, next, stress. So we're all students here, or we're gonna be students, and stress is a normal part of that lifestyle but just don't let it get out of hand. The university provides a lot of support for you in that sense. So they have UM psychologists, which are there to help. 
Um, I believe that you have five free sessions with them. Super, super nice people. You can either, you can do a telephone call. I don't know if at the moment they're meeting in person or with COVID and everything, but um, I have called one myself. I have a lot of friends that have called them. They're just a really, really good resource if you just need to talk to someone, um, if studying or whatever is getting a little bit too much for you, even personal life. So definitely make use of that. I mean, three, five free sessions is great and they will be able to help you um, even if you have to go to something else or refer you or whatever. Um, the next thing is your family doctor or GP or Huisart, I don't know, the Dutch. Thomas, maybe. I start, yeah. I start. <laughs> um, so these, this is your GP, your general practitioner. They are the gatekeeper to the Dutch health system. So if you need to, if you have an emergency even, sometimes you will have to go through your GP first. Obviously not if it's life or death. If you have to go to the, the, the hospital for an emergency, that's fine. But usually if you have to, you know, go to the hospital for whatever other reason, you'll have to go to your GP first and they'll have to refer you. So the, one of the first things you should do is find a GP in your neighborhood, close to where you live and register with them. So you have a list on our map of all the GPs in the city. The most important thing is that you choose one that is close by to you, that you won't have to cycle for 30 minutes to get to. Um, also make sure when you call them beforehand, before registering, that they speak English. And, um, yeah, registering is super easy. I think you just give them a, a name, an email, and a mobile number, and then I think you are registered. Um, you don't have to worry about the level of their medical expertise. All of GPs in the Netherlands get the same basic, not basic, but the same level of training. So they will all be the same standard of doctor. Um, just choose one that's close by to you. Trust me, this is the best decision you can make. Um, and yeah, I believe... That's all there is. Again, a lot of talking, but if there are any questions, Thomas, or you move on. Uh, yeah, there are still a lot of questions, but I'm not even at the end yet. So um, we will later go through them, I guess. Um, okay. So I think we will move on for now and then come back to as many questions as possible. Okay. Um, I saw a few questions about transport already, so maybe we'll cover a bit here in the next um, three slides. We'll start off with my favorite topic, which is bikes. I say favorite, I hate cycling so much. Um, I used to live up the hill, like the only hill in Maastricht, and I was there. So cycling has not had a great um, not had a great experience with that. How but can we be friends, you, Amanda? How can we be friends? Thomas loves loves cycling, so it's yeah, it's we're making it work. We're making it work. Um, so in terms of you getting yourself a bike, which I would still recommend because really it saves you a lot of time. You can go a lot more places. Um, so there's a few places where you can buy a secondhand bike. We have them listed here, but we also have a. Uh, a lot of them listed on our website as well in the transport you got transport and then bikes and you'll find um, some more stuff there if you're looking to buy a fancy new bike there's also like Hortons will have new bikes as well just be careful when you buy a bike from let's say Facebook um, please be careful that you don't buy a stolen bike this is still a criminal offense even if you didn't know about it what you can do is there is a website we have it listed on our website on our website as well. We have the link there, but there's a website where you can check the registration number to see if it's been registered as stolen or something like that. So we'd recommend like, just be careful. I think for sure my first bike was stolen. It lasted me seven hours before it was stolen again, but um, <laughs> just be careful. You can also, <laughs> you can also, um, rent a bike, there's something called swap feeds. A lot of students use that. I think it's in the picture, maybe not, but um, it's, a good, it's a good price for students that you can rent a bike throughout the time that you're here. You pay per month. Um, also good, they do your repairs. So if you aren't good with like fixing things, which again, I was never good at. So I had another bike that just stayed in the tool shed for a year because I couldn't change the tire, um, really bad. So they kind of help you with that. So if you're like me, swap feeds might be the way to go as well. Um, in terms of like what to look for in a bike, you know, working lights, reflectors, both front and back, working 
bell and I cannot stress enough a functioning uh, functioning breaks like so many of my friends don't have functioning breaks where it's like the one works and you have to do something please please be careful it's really safe to drive here by bike to cycle um, compared to like where I was in Dublin mayhem um, so it is safe but please make sure that your bike is still like prepared for emergency brakes etc um, you can also get a fine if you don't have working lights so I would be very careful about that um, in terms of, I'm just seeing a question there, so I thought I'd answer it. Uh, please get a good lock. As Florian has said, my lock costs more than my bike, which doesn't say much because my bike is shit, but it costs more <laughs> than my bike because it's the only one I have left. Uh, so get a good lock. You can buy that at the bike shop, but also Hema, uh, Action, they have good prices for bikes as well. Um, I think that's the gist of the bikes. There's another part of the storage, which Fran will get to, and then maybe we can cover more questions then. Mm -hmm. um, just quickly, because someone's asking where they can check if the bike was stolen. So this is a website that is, as Amanda said, linked on our website under bikes. Um, we thought it was easier to just leave it there at the, as opposed to putting it here because you can't click on the link. But the, the bike will have a little registration number on the... Thomas, help me with the bike lingo. What's the part, the bar? <laughs> the handlebar? Or what do you mean, like the? No, no, the 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 frame, the bar, the bar, and whatever on on one of the bars. There's a bar. The bike. Um, and it will have a little number, and then you just input that number, and you can there check if the top tube. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Louis, Louis. Um, and uh, yeah, just check it uh, like input it into the thing and then you can find out if it's stolen or not and uh yeah basically that's it is it the <laughs> fine for just not having working bike lights or is it also fine for not having reflectors somebody asks i believe I right now required. they check yeah they require both but i know they're very active about working bike lights um for sure especially in the darker times which we are setting into soon in the winter they're out there on the street hunting for you guys so be careful a little also, tip sorry no, no, you go a ahead. little tip is to if you buy those lights that are kind of like flimsy and you just like tie them on is to get something like a zip tie um google zip tie you'll find them somewhere and to zip tie your your lights onto there because usually what happens at night if someone is wanting to go home and sees their bike lights have been stolen they just grab someone else's bike lights and the cycle continues so get a good zip tie. um i i also see another comment that i thought might be a good thing to address right now is that bikes are super overpriced so this is again like thousands of students are coming into the city they all want a bike so the market at the moment is like full of demand, but there's not much supply to, you know, meet the demand. So it might even be a good idea for you to wait maybe a month or a few weeks or so, and then everything will sort of calm, calm down, the dust will settle, and it might be easier and also cheaper for you to get a bike. Um, because at the moment, it, will, it might be really, really hard, or you might end up with, you're maybe more likely to end up with a stolen bike, because of course, like people are just trying to, to supply um so yeah be really careful and it's okay to spend a couple of months without a bike amanda has spent basically her whole time in mastery my bike got stolen a year ago and i haven't got one since so <laughs> it, it could be <laughs> it could be a good idea there are a couple of questions more questions on bikes um so for once where can i rent a bike for a few days i think uh the place at the station it's called and stasi uh, right next to the there you can rent one it's I don't know if you have any other recommendation, guys, but uh, that's yeah, it. you can also get like throughout the city, you can find the the, oh, yeah. the, the OV, city bikes. Exactly. And the OV chip, uh, yes. the OV feeds you can, of course, take. If you have an OV chip card, you can just take one at the station. Um, and somebody asked, when we buy a bike, will we have to register it somewhere? Um, you don't have to, but if you buy a new one, we highly recommend to because then it's registered in the register and if it gets stolen it's easier to find it back or if you mm -hmm. buy more for a bike then it's definitely worth the effort yeah okay i think, I think they, let's okay. move on just yes. quickly just for the rent the time. Bike. oh sorry okay i'll just write in the chat whatever Go um, ahead. 
No, it's just a like a quick option for if you need a bike for a couple of hours or so. Delphi Eats through the Hello Bike app works really nicely. Um, next, storage and security. So at the moment in Maastricht, we have a big campaign called Posifeeds. You see at the bottom right, um, it's being led by Maastricht Bike Bar, which is the sort of road transport bike authority in the city. Um, so they're really trying to promote positive use of bikes, positive feats, um, from anything from actually riding the bike to storing it, parking it. So it's really important that you know where to park your bike because if you do it in the wrong place, then it can get confiscated by the municipality. You'll have to pay like a 25 euro fine and actually go and pick up your bike at a depot, which is a little bit out of the city. So it's just a big hassle that you don't have to go through. It's really, really easy to find out where and where you cannot park your bike. Um, we do have a map in our transport section that shows all the different spots. So it's super easy to find out. The Master Bike Bar website is also great for this. Next, security. So as Amanda and I can testify to, bike theft is really common in Maastricht. It's actually, I think, the, the, the most common crime in the city. Um, so definitely get a good lock. I saw a comment there that, you know, the, the lock will, will they can be pretty steep, but it might be worth it if you don't want to lose your bike immediately. Um, if you're going to leave Maastricht for some time, then you can either leave your bike in your own building or there's also a secure spark. Um, wait, sorry, I can't read the... When you share your screen, you just can't see anything. Anyways, um, <laughs> so yeah, if you're going away for some time, leave your bike either in your own building or in front of the train station, there is a parking space underneath. You just go down the stairs and there you can leave your bike as well for a price. Um, and again, you can, other, you can also find other parking spots on the transport map. You will usually have to pay for them if you're leaving your bike for a long period of time. I believe the one in front of the train station, if you're leaving your bike for the first 24 hours, it's free. And then after that, you start to pay. Um, the next thing are pedestrianized streets. So some streets in the city, particularly in the city center, they're reserved for pedestrians between certain hours. So if you cycle through these streets, between these hours, then you could get a fine. Um, usually there will be a sign at the beginning of the pedestrianized area that says, um, for example, between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., no bikes. So it's really, really easy to find out if you're not supposed to be riding through there. Um, but you can also find out on the Maastricht Bride Bar website or on our transport map. Um, it has information. Again, just a simple rule to follow. You can find another street that's not pedestrianized that will get you to the same place and also help you avoid trouble. So, yeah. Okay, in terms of other forms of transport, but also to help you with your bike as well, there's the OV chip cart. So if you're looking to explore um, the Netherlands, but also looking to get around, if you're not living so central to Maastricht and you wanna take the bus or you wanna take the train, then we recommend you get an OV chip cart. Um, this is just like your public transport card. You can load money onto it and then you can use that to pay for the transport. You can either get an anonymous one, which is just like a card. You can give it to your friend. You can use whenever. Or you can get a personal one, which then you have to apply for. All of this is on our website under transport and how to apply for it. The personal one, it's it's got your face on it. You can load certain deals. If you ever want to get a, um, a part of the study finance for some students, you can get the travel pro for students. So you need to look that product. I'm okay. I thought I broke off for a second there. Um, so you need your personal OV chip card in that instance. Otherwise, if you're just looking to just use it for the occasional bus or something, then you can just get a an anonymous one, you can get those at the station, the anonymous ones, for example. Um, you can check out all the prices. You can either search it on Google, literally OV chip cart, it'll pop up, show you a location or check it out on our website. You can then use this to park in the underground um, parking spaces like the one in the station. You can use your OV chip cart to park your bike there. Um, I also just because I said park so a question about cars and everything we have a whole section on our website um, to explain where the, 
where the car parks are, how much it costs, which areas are for free. I would just say like with areas that are outside of the city center, just be careful of your car and whether it's a safe area or not. Um, yeah. yeah, so next to get into a little, little bit of a lighter topic. So it's really important that you guys handle all these sort of more administrative things that you have to go through when you move to a new city. But it's also super important that you enjoy your time, that you actually get to know Maastricht, um, and that you build yourself a community and a nice life outside of home, right? So it's really important that you explore. So our map has a lot of student recommendations. Uh, if you're looking for cafes, restaurants, vintage shops, gyms, um, all sorts of things, they're all on there and it's all student recommendations. So it's really, really great, a great resource for things to do. There's even now a new section on like outdoor spots. Um, we also recently came out with a blog for the best hikes in Maastricht. We have our in-house expert on walks, hikes and cycling routes, Thomas. So if you guys want any recommendations, definitely shoot us an email. We'll get all the information from Thomas and then relay it back to you. Um, if you're a sporty person or you want to join a sports team or just get into sports in general, then our sports section is the place for you. We list all the different organizations, gyms, private gyms, uh, just general groups that do sport. Um, it's all on there and we regularly update their information and we regularly add new organizations and options. So definitely check that out. Um, there's also UM Sports, which is the university sports complex. They offer a lot of classes for a membership and for just a general gym um, entrance, I guess. Uh, so that's a different option for you guys as well. If you are looking to just build a community, make new friends or um, follow up on a hobby or get a new hobby, then our community section is the place that you should be going to. Um, it shows, oh, sorry, all the options for um, I don't know, just theater groups, dance groups, um, poetry nights, uh, Amanda, help me out, climate change awareness, LGBTQ plus <laughs> rights. I don't yeah. know, there's so much stuff on there. There's a lot. Going through. Yeah, there's just, there's just so much. Um, I manage the databases and I just, I'm astounded every single time I go through them because there is a group for basically everyone out there. Um, so also check out that section. You can find a lot of cool things on there and just, it's a great way to get a new, to get to know a new city, right? Through its people, through its groups, through its organizations. So we definitely recommend that you get involved um, with all the initiatives that are happening at the moment because yeah, Maastricht has a lot to offer. It's small, but there's a lot of stuff. So don't underestimate it. I'm always so surprised whenever I see something going on, I'm like, how is this happening? Like who knows about this place that like is popping off so much, but mm -hmm. um, hopefully like it'll still be like that with the times that we're in, but I think we've made it work so far. So should be good. Yes. And on, on our website, this, like I said earlier, was just the tip of the iceberg. Um, we have so many different sections, so many things in details, for example, taxes, if you need to know about that, Fran did a really good job with that section. Um, if you want to know more about housing, like the point system, I saw that earlier, you can check that out or contact her team, Sword Lindbergh. Um, there's just so much more on our website and we hope that we've kind of given you the overall idea of what you need to know, especially now coming into Maastricht. If there is something that isn't on our website. Also, you can contact us. We'll get that. We'll get to that now. You can also follow us on our social media. I don't know why I'm doing this, but it's at the bottom <laughs> uh, <laughs> down below. Um, you can follow us on our social media. Within certain points in the year, we um, send you a reminder about something. Like if it's the time to apply for something, we say this is the time, or this letter is coming. Look out for that, as Fran mentioned earlier. So definitely follow us, give us a like. Um, yeah, and you can contact us. Next slide. Um, so yeah, these are our different contacts or emails. So you can shoot Amanda or myself an email and we will get back to you or either point you in the right direction or forward your email to the right person. We also have a WhatsApp number. This is handled by Amanda. 
don't call her, <laughs> just text her. Um, and um, yeah, if you're looking at a special case, then maybe the ISH will be the better option or the her team if your problem has to do with housing. Um, so yeah, just take a photo. These are really, really useful points of contact for you guys. And um, yeah, well, that is the end of our presentation. We can go through some questions now. Um, but thank you guys so much for attending, um, for those who will be leaving us. And if you do have some questions, then definitely stick around and we will get to them at the moment. Yeah. Thanks again. Again, we're having two more webinars this week, one tomorrow at 3 and one on Thursday at 10. They are basically the same, um, but we might have a little bit more detail, uh, time to get in detail into certain questions. So if you, for example, joined a bit later today, we recommend maybe uh, joining again. Um, maybe a couple of more questions, although it's already nearly 11 because we've been so many today, um, about um, parking. Um, how could students deal with that if they come here by car? What could you say about this? I mean, I don't have a car, Thomas. Maybe you're the most appropriate person to answer this, but we do have a lot of information on the website. This I know. Yeah, so when you do have a car, um, you can apply for a parking permit in your neighborhood where you live. Um, will cost quite an amount per month, but then you have a dedicated parking spot where, where you live, or you can use free park and ride options um, outside of the city. Then safety might be a concern, but um, that's definitely an option. Usually by bike is the best option in the city. You also don't need a car, even if you have to transport bigger things. You can either use services of the university uh, of the municipality, for example, to pick up your bigger trash items. You can find information on that also on our website in the recycling section. Um, maybe you guys can also skip through the open questions. I think we answered most of them. Um, this will also be uploaded later on our YouTube and Facebook channel. We unfortunately do not have an app flow. We would be happy to have it, but we are very mobile friendly. So if you open uh, our website in a browser, um, it is um, yeah suited to be used on mobile. And we hope to improve that further in the next month. Mm -hmm. um, someone's, someone's asking, oops, sorry. Go ahead. Someone's asking if they need an OV card or if it's optional. I don't know if you address that, but it's, Obviously, it's optional. You don't need one. Um, I don't have one. Uh, it depends on where you live, what your needs are. So definitely not obligatory to get one. There were just a few questions about the registering with the municipality. I think sometimes when you use the Chrome browser, I had this last week as well, um, it doesn't complete, so to say. So make sure you do get a confirmation after you've done everything that you've they've received everything. If you don't, then it didn't work out. Try use a different browser. Um, yeah. And then someone asked about Uber. It does not really exist here. I think once I, I used it like three years ago, but no, you can get a taxi at the taxi rank. But if it's to do with moving, literally also just look up like moving van Maastricht, it should pop up mm -hmm. um, or check the Facebook groups as well. For all dedicated housing problems, please turn to the Hue Teams at Limburg. I saw some questions about the point system, um, as well as other issues with calculating how much rent you should pay. That's exactly their field of expertise, so please contact them for that. Mm -hmm. There's also one about the housing subsidy. Uh, you can only, one of the requirements for the, for her to slag the subsidy is that you have to have independent accommodations. So you have to have your own doorbell um, and your actual toilet and kitchen have to be behind the same door as your room. So everything kind of has to, has to be your own. So if you share with other students, unfortunately means you're not in principle eligible for her to slug. Okay. You see anything else you want to answer or? Uh, um, I see like, is it true that after six o'clock parking is free? That is true, except for on Thursdays where the shops are open until nine o'clock and therewith also the parking um, costs are longer or you need to park uh, pay as long as the shops are open. Um, it also depends on where um, you want to park outside in 
the neighborhoods it's actually for free all the time but there are different zones um, and on Sundays it's usually between 12 and 6 when you have to pay while during the week I think it's between 8 and 6 but to be sure check the corresponding information at the parking uh, signs If you have more questions, like our contact information is there, we're readily available to you. You can WhatsApp me, no problem. We can get into it. If I don't know, then I can lead you to the person that should know. Like, don't ever hesitate to contact us. Unless you call me, don't call me, please. Um, it's just easier as well. I don't know all this information off by heart. So if I'm doing it over the phone, I can't remember everything. So. WhatsApp us, send us a DM on our social media or email us on these email addresses. Okay, great. I think <laughs> that's a wrap. Bless you, Amanda. <laughs> um, thanks for joining again. Um, maybe see some of you tomorrow or on Thursday. Um, to everybody else, have a great stay in Maastricht. Contact us with more, uh, with your questions if they're very specific. And definitely don't forget to follow us on social media where we, as mentioned, will highlight what's important during the year. And there will come other things up that you should be aware of. So we hope to have provided you with some tips and tricks and you learned something today. And with that, enjoy your time in Maastricht and uh, see you around. <laughs>